Hey, I'm golf broadcaster Matt Adams, the updated and expanded second edition of my book, The Golf Round I'll Never Forget, Golf's Biggest Stars Recall Their Finest Moments, is now available. Readers can expect to march with Arnie's Army at the 1960 U.S. Open, relive Jack Nicklaus's remarkable 1986 Masters win, and be amazed by the Tiger Slam. The Golf Round I'll Never Forget, Golf's Biggest Stars Recall Their Finest Moments. Pick it up where fine books sold, including barnesandnoble.com and amazon.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, sports fans, and welcome to another edition of Yesterday Sports on the Sports History Network. Today, I thought we'd take a little look at some AFL history. We're going to talk about the 1967 Oakland Raiders. Before we break down the Oakland Raiders 1967 season, let's take a quick look at their first seven seasons. Things didn't look promising in their first three seasons as the team won only nine of 42 games. Things changed quickly in 1963 when Al Davis took over as head coach and general manager. The Raiders finished the season with a 10-4 record, a huge improvement over their 1-13 record in 1962. Unfortunately for Oakland, they were in the same division as the 11-3 San Diego Chargers, who went on to win the AFL Championship. The team digressed in 1964, finishing with a 5-7-2 record, before bouncing back in 1965 and 1966 with identical 8-5-1 records. The Raiders made some good moves during the 1967 offseason, picking up quarterbacks Daryl Monica from the Buffalo Bills and George Blanda who was also a top-notch kicker from the Houston Oilers. They also picked up cornerback Willie Brown from the Denver Broncos and assistant coach John Madden from San Diego State. Additionally, they used their first-round draft pick to get offensive guard Gene Upshaw from Texas A&M. Al Davis, who stepped down as head coach after the 1965 season, became AFL commissioner, part owner of the Raiders, and continued his job as the team's general manager. The new head coach was former assistant John Roach. The season got off to a terrific start as Oakland destroyed the Denver Broncos in week one. Leading 44-0 in the fourth quarter, defensive back Warren Powers intercepted a pass and ran it back 36 yards to make the final score 51-0. So dominant was the Raiders' defense, the Broncos had only three first downs the entire game and had minus five yards in total. The Raiders gained 208 yards rushing. Fullback Hewitt Dixon gained 55 yards on just 11 carries with one touchdown and added another 78 yards receiving with one touchdown. Receiver Warren Wells caught one pass for 46 yards and another for a 50-yard touchdown. The following week, Quarterback Daryl Monica connected with Fred Belitnikoff on a 32-yard touchdown strike to get the scoring started as Oakland cruised to an easy 35-7 win over the Boston Patriots. It was a big day for LaMonica, who completed 15 of 25 passes for 251 yards and three touchdowns with no interceptions. He also had a 21-yard run for a touchdown. Former Houston Oiler Billy Cannon caught four passes for 114 yards, while running back Clem Daniels rushed for 95 yards on 20 carries and scored one touchdown. 
The Raiders' defense held the Patriots' running game to 65 yards and harassed Boston quarterback Babe Perilli into three interceptions while registering eight sacks. Game three would match the Raiders against the defending AFL champion Kansas City Chiefs. Oakland jumped out to a 10-0 lead in the second quarter, but Kansas City scored a touchdown to cut the lead to three points. Two George Blanda field goals increased the Raiders' lead to nine points, but the Chiefs scored their second touchdown to cut the lead to only two points. LaMonica and tight end Billy Cannon connected on a 29-yard touchdown strike, and Oakland held on to win 23-21. The Raiders' defense played well, allowing the Chiefs only 243 total yards, Daryl LaMonica had a good game, completing 23 of 38 for 236 yards and two touchdowns with one interception, despite getting sacked five times. After three home games, the Raiders traveled to New York to play the vastly improved Jets. Before Oakland knew what hit them, they were behind 20-0. The Raiders' defense had a tough time trying to stop running back Emerson Boozer, who gained 98 yards on 18 carries and scored two touchdowns. Jets receiver Don Maynard also gave them fits, gaining 86 yards on four receptions. The Oakland offense couldn't get much going all day, gaining just 210 total yards. LaMonica threw four interceptions and was sacked three times. In a Week 5 game against the Buffalo Bills, the Raiders fell behind 7-0 before scoring 17 unanswered points. Fred Boletnikoff scored on a 41-yard reception, and middle linebacker Dan Connors scored on a 30-yard interception return. The Raiders' defense made up for their lackluster performance against the Jets holding the Bills' running game to just 38 yards and sacking Bills quarterback Jack Kemp 11 times. Raiders had no trouble with the hapless Patriots in Week 6, winning easily 48-14. Oakland dominated Boston in every phase of the game, outgaining them 395 yards to 83. The Raiders' defense continued to make life miserable for opposing quarterbacks, registering seven sacks. Darrell LaMonica threw for 240 yards, four touchdowns, and had no interceptions. Receivers Fred Boletnikoff and Warren Wells both had big days. Boletnikoff had three receptions for 109 yards, and Wells scored two touchdowns one for 48 yards, and another for 24 yards. The 5-0-1 Chargers came to Oakland in Week 7 and fell behind 16-3 before receiver Lance Allworth caught a 71-yard touchdown pass from John Hadle to close the gap to 6 points. But the second half was all Raiders. Leading 30-10 to 10 after three quarters, LaMonica connected with Boletnikoff on a 70-yard touchdown pass. And before it was over, the Raiders had a 51-10 to 10 victory. The Raiders' defense had a tough time stopping Lance Allworth, who had 10 receptions for 213 yards. But to be fair, there wasn't a defense in the league that could stop Allworth. They did hold the Chargers to only 54 yards rushing and forced five turnovers. LaMonica had a solid game, passing for 316 yards and two touchdowns with only one interception. Running back Clem Daniels had a terrific game, rushing for 94 yards on 16 carries with one touchdown and gaining another 101 yards receiving with one touchdown. The Oakland defense played another outstanding game in Week 8 against the Broncos, holding them to 7 first downs 
and 119 total yards while sacking Broncos quarterback 11 times. Offensively, Hewitt Dixon had 74 yards rushing and another 75 yards receiving. Oakland won 21 to 17 to up their record to 7 and 1. Okay, we're going to stop today and we're going to continue next week with the second half of the Raiders 1967 season. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you and God bless. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude. And I hope that you enjoyed this recent episode presented by the Sports History Network and were able to learn some good old-fashioned sports history knowledge nuggets. I started the Sports History Network back in 2020 with the mission to help podcasters find a community of like-minded sports history nerds as well as helping aspiring podcasters to start their own shows. We have a little bit over 30 shows on the network right now covering all sorts of sports history, but as far as I'm concerned, we're just at the toothpick in the ocean moment, you know, that can't even figure it out because there's so much more coming. We wanted to create the ultimate headquarters for sports yesteryear, starting with Podcast Network and our website, but we're going to continue to move into other mediums as well. And here's the cool part, because we want you to be part of our team. So if you're interested in starting your own podcast, or maybe being a guest on one of our shows, or who knows, maybe even writing an article for us over on the website. Seriously, all you gotta do is reach out to us on the contact page over at sportshistorynetwork.com. You can be as technologically savvy as a Neanderthal tapping on a stone trying to figure out this whole hieroglyphics thing back in the day. Again, it doesn't matter, because even if you don't understand the whole podcast space, we have a production team that can pretty much help you out with doing everything. All you gotta do, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com, head to the contact page, fill it out. That message goes right to me, and I'll reach out to you as soon as I can. But for now, dude, I'm through if you're through.